Oh, um, it is definitely uh, different. And for you that were out here, obviously, I think that uh, it was very intentional to try to really push them. It's unique that they gave us a little more time for camp. Not more practice days, but more time. So we're actually practicing today and taking tomorrow off. So um, try to get into that, maybe that NFL model ish a little bit where you know you got a little bit more time in between some practices. So really try to go out there and push them today mentally, physically. Even though we were just in helmets, but the tempo and the pace of what we're doing because of the day off tomorrow. So um, I think a lot of guys were challenged. I think that uh, I hope they understand what the pace and the tempo, whether they're sixth year guys like Will Huber or, or some of these new guys walking in the door. You said the energy in the A game, you said the, the energy each year when you guys show up has been higher and expectations have increased. Did you see that today? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, I think these guys are a little bit different. Every, every team's different, but I think that. You know, we've lost a lot of really big time guys and guys that have been here for a long time. I say that life without Desmond Ritter and Kobe Bryant are different, but I think that sometimes those guys in, in their own way are, are really excited about proving who they are and what they've done as leaders. And, uh, you know, so I think that them coming out here today, setting the tempo and the tone for, you know, how we do things. You know, it's not a physical day. I tell the offensive line, the defensive line, even though there's no pads on, it's not a physical day. But I mean, just it's, it's the mindset and the attitude of what leadership looks like. And, uh, I think those guys have kind of taken that, you know, to heart a little bit, and uh, I think we've got to make it to some great leaders. Losing as many guys as you did, how different does practice feel today? I don't know that it feels a whole lot different, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, everybody wants to talk about the quarterback, and it's going to be a battle. And we haven't had a true quarterback battle probably in a while, but I think that more than anything, there's a lot of other spots. I think quarterback, we're going to be in good shape. I mean, those guys will battle. Uh, we're going to have some great options. I don't worry as much about that. I think sometimes. The, the most difficult thing to not just replace, but figure out who's going to be as a tailback. And so that's one of those spots where I think that we really got to put some pressure on some of these guys to see what they can do and see what they can handle. And it's not a sport where you're live and tackling all the time. So as much as people want to talk about the corners and the, and the quarterback, those guys are going to get challenged every single day, just the way practices are. Sometimes it's more difficult to, to figure out what you got in the tailback position as far as who can hold on to the football and who can you know, make things happen after contact. What are your expectations for Connor? Well, I mean, again, he's going to have a great opportunity. He's been a little bit dinged up. Um, we're trying to be smart until it's time when we can we can find out what what he can do. Um, but he's going to have a he's going to have an opportunity to 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 be the guy, just like just like Brian Montgomery and just like Charles McClellan, um, you know, and, and Miles McGovern. There's we don't know. I mean, all those guys have been spare guys. We even took Ethan Wright out of that room. So I think that's the position where we've got to find out a lot of things uh, for the next. Days. What went into that? What went into that Ethan Wright decision to move him on the defensive side of the ball? I, I don't. I mean, it's it's just one of those things. I think in the long run, it's going to be the best for him. Um, sometimes, we, you know, obviously, number one most important thing is we got to do for the team. And, and there's no greater team guy than Ethan Wright. I mean, he's walking in uh, last night or walking out last night. He said, "Coach, just you know, if you want me to do anything else too, just let me know. I'll do whatever you need me for the team." And but sometimes, you know, in the off season, you got to really kind of look at the big picture of things and say, "Okay, where's this guy's greatest future going to be?" And, I think that it can be on the defense side of the ball. I mean, he, he does remind me of a guy like Brian Cook. You know, he hasn't done it and hasn't been over there a bunch, um, but his versatility gives him a lot of opportunities. Uh, I think in the long run, that's it's the best position for him. I hope that uh, we're able to lead him over there and let him compete and do that, uh, as opposed to what we need best for the team. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned versatility, Mark Bontorich, kind of Swiss Army knife type guy, maybe down the road, what would that look for him? So he's obviously been a starter for us for three years at nickel. And, uh, you know, in, in the Georgia game, he was the one, he was the guy that actually went into the boundary and played the boundary corner in that game as a game time decision. Um, so he's going to get a lot of opportunities. We know what he can do at the, at the nickel spot. He's the guy, you know, there's two fifth year guys in the back end with him and Javon Hicks. Uh, we're kind of going to move him around. One of, there's one of the guys that we can feel like we can move around and figure out what's best for him and the team. Uh, as for some of these other guys that, you know, have been here but haven't played a bunch. I really want them to get into a position so that they compete and see uh, see how much confidence they can get in what it is that they're doing in those positions. Arc One and Javon are the two guys that you know, give us some flexibility. Have you had any conversations about Evan and Ben working in tandem at all? Or are you looking for a true number one, a guy that's a no? Good we, guy? we don't. You don't ever go into something trying to look for a, you know uh, an easier decision. The, the reality is that you want somebody to take it, and I think that's what's best for the team. That's what's best for everybody. Uh, but you know, plans do change. We'll have a, the ability to do whatever's best for the team, you know. But I think for those guys, more than anything, um, I think they've got the trust and respect for each other, and the love for each other. They're going to make it a competition in the battle, and uh, I think 
that that's what's best for all of us. As last, year, last year was all the stuff that it brought the program. How much is the start of camp about maybe moving on from that and leaving it? It is. I mean, we, we tried to do that right when we came back. You know, everybody talks about the, you know, what, what it did for us. And, and again, the last two years, we've we been really, really, really good. I shouldn't say the last two, last four, to be honest with you. But I think the uniqueness of when you lose the last game, there's still a little bit of that, you know, that, that chip on your shoulder. There's a little bit of that pit in your stomach that's different than even three years ago where you, you, know, you come out of a bowl game with a really good season and then you win. Um, I think the Georgia and the Alabama both kind of sent you in the offseason, not over talking about, maybe outside of the program, but inside the program, not over talking about what you've done because, you know, it was a disappointing end. High tide rises all ships seem to be the theme of last year's camp. Do you have a theme for this year's camp? Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we just got to be us. And, uh, we don't know exactly what us is just yet, but uh, I think that uh, a lot of those things kind of come to fruition as we as we get to higher ground and start to kind of develop um, a lot of those things. But uh, you know, I think that not what we put on the walls, not what we repeat every day, it's what those guys really kind of embody themselves and embrace. And, uh, Higher ground will kind of give us that. What's the most important thing that you need to get out of higher ground as a team? There's not one thing. I think that's a unique uniqueness of uh, you know, what I've learned from being out of higher ground. I mean, obviously, there's a ton of work to be done. Uh, there's a ton of battles and challenges. There's a ton, a ton of growth. But I think that you know what you can't sell short of being out there is the ability to grow together. And that's what's so unique. Like today, these guys will go in, we'll do some things. We've got you know a lift and some film and some lunch, and then they'll they'll all go back to their own places. And, get on their phones and play their video games and do whatever it is when you go to higher ground you got to kind of hang out you got to sit on the rocking chairs together you got to play cards together i think a lot of that stuff does something um, besides just what we do in football um, that gives us an edge you mentioned losing obviously des and kobe um, josh talked about josh Wally talked about wanting to be a leader for this team are there certain guys that you've seen step up already or that you expect to kind of Take that role. There are, there yeah. are. I mean, and, and it's not that Josh wasn't a leader last year. It's not that Will Huber wasn't a leader last year. I mean, those guys are in a little bit different light right now. Um, they've got a little bit more on their shoulders. Uh, we talked about it this morning. And, you know, the biggest thing about the first thing about leadership is, is you got to lead yourself. And when you lead yourself and you become the example, it's pretty easy. You know, they don't have to stick a C on your chest. They don't have to point you. I don't have to stand in front of the camera and tell you who's our leaders. The reality is, we walk in that locker room. They know who to watch. They know who to act like. And, Josh has done it for a few years. I think there's going to be a little bit more on his plate now, and uh, he needs to know and understand that leaders make others around him better. And uh, it's first by taking care of yourself. When it comes to running back and quarterback and all the battles on this team, is that a, you're going to let it play out all throughout camp kind of thing and just play it by ear or up till game week? Do you have an idea yet? I think I said to Chad the other day, you'll probably know maybe Friday night before the first game. <laughs> I think that we'll have a pretty good idea. You'd like to have some things in your mind solidified in you know, the first week and a half, but you don't, you know, you're not for sure on some of those things. We'll, we'll probably never tell too much. But I think it's important to the team, it's important to the progress, to you know how you become us, you know, and just what us is, um, that we can figure some of those things out. If we can't, we can't. I mean, in some ways, that that's, you know, if it's become such a battle at all those positions that it's too hard to, to tell until the last moment, then. Um, hopefully, I did good. But, uh, I know for the, you know, I think the, the grand picture and the, the big picture, of all things you'd like to have some, some idea of how you how you finished out those last two weeks of camp. If you tell us, we'll stop asking about. Yeah, well, I'd like to give you some easy questions. You know, I don't want to make your job all that difficult for you. You know, some of these guys have a harder time coming up with questions, so it makes it simple. And I don't tell you who the starter is. You can come up. We just open it up right there, and we don't have that awkward silence. Coach, the sweatshirt in this this heat. You dropping some pounds? No, it's I'd pretty. Pretty much uh, the same same thing every day, whether it's some version of a sweatshirt. But uh, you know, I think that we got a lot of things to, to, to compete, a lot of guys to compete, and um, just kind of a reminder for, for what's important to us. The, the sweatshirt has nothing to do with it. It's more the, the idea of what uh, what reminds us. You know, iron sharpens iron. And, we got to do this stuff. We got to compete together to make us all better. So what was, the, was the message intention today for day one? It, it, it it'll stick probably throughout the entire camp. I think it's subliminally, you know, the, the older guys and the guys that you want to know what that means and remind them every single day they're the ones that uh, we posted in front of them. I hope they'll take it to heart. But uh, we know that's what's going to give us a chance to be who we are and develop what that us really looks like. I don't know if I, I have a comp for Ivan Pierce with like body type and skill set. How unique is he and how big of an Well, is Well, his body type. When he walked in the door, it was a little bit different than his body type right now. He, he's really in, in some good shape and uh, is 
really got it's gonna be exciting. And uh, I don't know, you're right. I'm, I, there's not a whole lot that I've had in the past that I would say comparable to. And we haven't had the good fortune of seeing everything. You know, obviously spring football and, and, and fall ball. Uh, but when they actually start to go some live situations, I think his game is going to go up another level. But uh, he's done an unbelievable job at embracing, you know, who we are and what we do and, and how we do it. And uh, he's going to have a heck of a year. Thanks, Coach. Thank Thanks.